And I got to talk too at their meetings and it was so much fun because every day not only did I get to kind of wrap things up about the biblical point, but we made some fun things. How many of you remember the goo? It was supposed to smell nice. I'm sorry, I didn't put the orange essence in it. Okay. I tell you what, we had so much fun this week. I, I want to give a huge thank you to any adult over the age of 12. See, you know we are. See? People in orange shirts, even if they're sitting in these rows here and they look like kids, they, they are kids because we had kids who were leading kids. Um, I don't know if you know the concept of discipleship, but it's when you get your friends to do what you're doing. I call it the Tom Sawyer effect. Yeah, I have to paint this fence. My dad told me to paint this fence. Would you come and paint it with me? And pretty soon Tom Sawyer had all his friends painting the fence while he went and, and played with Huckleberry Finn. So, uh, you know, I, I guess that's how the story goes. You get your friends to, to help you. And that's what happened this week. That's what happened this week. We had a lot of friends that helped. Um, these, these texts that you just heard these kids read. Guys, uh, le, le, let me see. Who, who were the readers again? Okay, there you are. Number one was Genesis 1, God made you... Okay, so how many parents are really glad that this week in this VBS, our kids learned that God made us? Amen? Parents, you happy about that? Some may say, well, you know, there's some other theories out there. I'm going to probably hear about that when they go to school. But this week in this VBS, your kids learned that God made us. Wow, God! You can say wow, God, too, if you like. You know, he, he enjoys, the Bible says he inhabits our praise. So when we praise him, as these children have been praising him all week long, you are giving God something to inhabit in you. And uh, I, I read recently a, a famous writer saying, uh, you know what, when we speak these words, we actually change ourselves. So your kids this week said, wow, God, like a hundred thousand times. Do you think that was part of what we were supposed to do? If I said, God made you, you're supposed to say, wow, so, so then we learned that even in tough times, when things seem to be against us. And, I, and kids, I want you to know that I could probably point to every single mom or dad or grandma or grandpa in this room right now. I could point to them and I could ask them to say, did you have something hard happen to you this week? And I bet you every single one of them would say, uh-huh, I tried so hard and it just didn't work out. So it's really good to know that God is for us, right? Okay. The Lord your God will go with you wherever you go. So what I like to say is when we leave church, we don't leave the presence of God. Shall I tell you one of my secrets? I've stopped asking God to be with me. Amen. Yeah, that's kind of strange, isn't it? I don't ask... Okay. I want my friend to come up. All right. Here's, here it is. You ready? Hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? Would you come and stand by me? Hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? You, you sure? Hi, how you doing? Thank you for standing by me. You're, you're welcome. I got a welcome. Dad, well done. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> nice that you're standing by me. Thank you. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> okay, you better go sit down. 
Need I say more? If God is with us all the time, why do we keep asking Him to come be with us? It's about as dumb as that, right? So I've stopped asking God to be with me. I'm claiming the promise that He is with us all the time. Okay, so your kids learned that in VBS this week. I hope you go away uh, remembering the fact that when you ask God to be with you again and again and again, I don't know, maybe his arm is sore by now where you've been poking and saying, would you come be with me? When he's standing right beside you and he promises to never leave you or forsake you. Day four. Oh, my favorite. Psalm 89 two. God will always love you. I simply want to say that if we believe that God is love, then He can never be different than He already is, right? And in fact, if, if He's love, if He's love, then, then that means that He will always love you because He will always be Himself. God can never, God never changes. He promises, you may change, but I never will. So, that's why we can say with confidence, I believe, that God will always love us. Wow, Does that mean that he will love me when I took the cookie, when mom said, like Uncle Eric always said this week, wait for it, wait for it? I didn't wait. Does God still love me when I ate the cookie anyway? Yeah, yeah He does. He does. And parents, uh, grandparents, you know uh, that when you ran that red light this week, uh, you know, God still loves you. Um, you, you, you know that, that when you sent that, that hateful email, uh, you know, with a little bit of sarcasm in it that you knew would hurt that person, God still loves you, okay? You, you know that, that when you thought weird political thoughts in, in this political environment that we find ourselves in, um, you know, God, God still loves our leaders in this country. Okay? That's something that we need to hold on to. We're teaching our kids the basics here, and we just get to do the more complicated stuff, but God will always love you. Amen. I love it. Day number five. God has a plan that each and every one of us need to know going forward. And part of the way in which we find that plan out is by taking time every day to talk to God and also to listen to God, okay? We taught Bible verses to your kids this week. I hope you don't mind that, okay? The God that created them also spoke to them this week through His Word and through the skits that were done, through the games that were played. I love the pictures. They showed several pictures of the games that were being played. Richard had them... Uh, you, you know, he's, uh, you, you had them doing that, that four-person lean-on-me kind of game. That's really cool. I, I, I think that adults would like to try that sometime, too. Do, do you think it would be fun to watch the adults do that? Yeah. Do you think they would trust each other? Yeah. Put your head on someone else's lap and then, and then not have your hands down? Yeah. Trust, my friends, trust. Kids... Kids trust each other way more than we trust even God. This week, this week, let's go away knowing that God has a plan for us. The kids learned that this week. Do you know that this week? As I look out in the congregation, I see people who I'm getting to know just a little better every day, and I know that you are moving forward in your life and that you know that by trusting God, He will lead and guide in your life. Um, I said to someone this week who was inferring that being a Christian is a good thing. Amen. Um, 
I said, so has it been more fun? You know, there's many songs about various individuals who have more fun because you're this or because you're that. But the question we really have to be asking ourselves and we asked the kids this week is, because we called it the Maker's Fun Factory, is being connected to Jesus more fun than not? The bigger question maybe is to ask yourself, is my life in connection with Jesus looking like more fun than the other person's life that is not connected to Jesus so that they say, ooh, ooh, I want some of that. So God has a plan for us. He has a plan. He wants us to be a part of his kingdom in the here and now. Don't wait until the sweet by and by, because if you wait till the sweet by and by and you don't enjoy the here and now, there may not be a sweet by and by. Okay, the series that we have been on, which I will advertise freely to you now, has been the good news in the Bible. In particular, we have been looking at the Old Testament, and it has been part of what we have been doing this week with the kids. We have been, we have been telling them the good news. And I will end in Ecclesiastes. It is one of my favorite books, and it is one of the most disturbing books books in the Bible. It's after Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. It's written by the teacher. He calls himself the teacher, but it's really Solomon. And he tells us that things in life may look meaningless. And in fact, after he had gone ahead and experimented with everything, see this thing over here? Great job. Great job. He experimented with everything. He says in his book, I denied myself nothing. In fact, in chapter 11 here, he tells the young man, go ahead, do whatever you want. But please don't forget that God has a plan for your life. Go ahead, experiment. But please don't forget that God is going to bring into judgment all those things that you have done. And my Bible tells me in Revelation that we will be judged in our relationship with him by whether or not we had a relationship with him. So the question is this week, are you going to be like the kids and know that God says, I have a plan for you. I can tell they are ready for lunch. They've even had a snack. We've thought of everything. So with that, I will say the Maker Fun Factory is always open. The Maker himself is always interested. And the Maker says, I am ready to give you eternal life in the here and now and the hereafter if you'll just follow my plan. Come to Sabbath school once in a while, kids. You'll have more fun. Aunt Linda says, come to Sabbath school. Grandma Esther says, come to Sabbath school. How many of you are coming to Sabbath school? I thought so. Parents, just going to ask you from the bottom of my heart, teach your children well. Give them the opportunity to know the God that has a plan for them. To know the God that you pray to every day and every week. The God that is never going to leave you or forsake you. The God that these kids learned this week made them. Wow, God. Amen and amen. <laughs>